Hello, everyone. My name is Stephanie Tauber Gomez, and I work at Digital Switzerland, co leading the area of collaborative innovation. Usually, I'm not at such a fancy studio like this one here, but uh, in an office and working with different organizations to jointly find solutions to today's rather complex challenges. So basically, like how to, for example, use digitalization to create solutions for climate change or how to improve the healthcare system. Today, I'm here to present to you the Startup Battle 2021. The Startup Battle is a digital day's stage to promote and support Swiss entrepreneurs and startups. And more than just that, what we want to do is take you onto this journey and share with you their passions and their entrepreneurial ingenuity of not just simply accepting how things are today, but continuously strive to find new solutions on how they could be tomorrow. We will be presenting to you 15 startups in five episodes. Today, it's episode number three, where we have another three startups pitching to convince you, me, and all of our experts. What you can do at home is vote and help your favorite startup to get them a spot on the finals on November 10th. To do so, go onto the webpage digitaltag.swiss at startup paddle. Sorry, slash, of course. <laughs> and um, yeah, very curious once more to see who have we selected for today's episode. And I'm very happy to introduce you to my colleague and co-moderator today, Matthias Zwingli, head of a startup at Digital Switzerland. Hi. Hello, <laughs> pleasure as well. So I guess, Everyone's kind of curious, what does that actually mean? Like head of startup at Digital Switzerland. So what, it is, it, what is it that you usually do? I ask myself uh, sometimes <laughs> as well. Um, <laughs> now it's actually quite simple. So I think our idea or our initiative is really to create Switzerland more and bigger startups. And that's basically what we what we all working on. So um, creating more unicorns and then making Switzerland aware as well in the world. We have great tech and great deep tech startups, but sometimes if you come across the borders, um, they're not as well known. And of course, funding is a big topic, so attract more international funding, talk about that as well. And last but not least, I would say, to get the, the word of these incredible entrepreneurs and their visions and their ideas out in the world. And uh, that is one of the reasons why we're here today. Uh, the startup battle was exactly designed to tell Swiss people what incredible entrepreneurs they have and what incredible visionaries they are and uh, show them what the next ideas are that shape the future. Cool. And uh, as far as I can remember, we won't be alone neither, right? Fortunately not. So uh, we have the pleasure to have some support uh, from an expert side and I have the absolute pleasure to introduce first Eric Schmidt. Eric himself is a serial entrepreneur. Uh, he raised over millions of dollars in funding over the last uh, couple of years and co-founded many companies such as Frontify, Longevity One and uh, Chorus Therapeutics. And from such a, with such a track record, Eric, um, my big question is maybe what would you advise a future entrepreneur that wants to go a similar path? What learnings did you take that, you should, that they should take on their way? Um, thank you, Matthias. Um, well, I think uh, for me, uh, what I've learned over all these years, and I spent uh, 20 years in, in California, in Silicon Valley, is always look for uh, a market that is uh, big and growing. Um, <clears throat> put together a management team that can get the job done. Um, have a brilliant idea that you can build into a product. And... Um, <clears throat> create competitive, sustainable advantages against your competition. And last but not least, be reasonable with your price. Price per share, price, anything with numbers, you know, revenues, projections, anything. That's all I have. I mean, that is already a playbook how to scale up a company. Thanks a lot, <laughs> Eric. <laughs> um, next up, I have the absolute pleasure to introduce Olga Peters. 
Olga, you co-founded a very successful Swiss startup yourself called Qualisense in 2010. So you're in the business for quite some time too. And uh, since 2020, you're in charge of an incubation and uh, startup engagement program at ABB New Business Factory. So with all that and being an entrepreneur yourself, my big question is, of course, where does the passion come from to start an entrepreneurial career? Thank you very much, Matthias, for the introduction. And um, I think ultimately it all comes down to people. I like working with courageous, intelligent, ambitious people who are working towards solving problems that can make this world and our lives a better place. Amazing. So good thing we have uh, some of these very grateful and encouraging people here today. And uh, without further ado, I uh, introduce our first startup, I would say. So let me introduce you the first startup up here, Kaspar and or und, and uh, is co-founder Jan Philipp Schade. Kaspar enables everyone to build up wealth, even in times of negative interest rates, which we have today. And um, maybe I was wondering a bit on the name. So Jan Philipp, could you quickly give me a, a hint? How did you come up with uh, Kaspar und? Sure, yeah, my pleasure. First of all, thanks for having us here today. And uh, you might think that there's something missing because it just ends with an end. But the fact is, no, actually, the end stands for everyone, our customers, everyone working in the company, and our partners. So we understand ourselves as an integrative brand trying to get everyone on board. Well, that's, uh, that's already a good start. <laughs> so next up, we hear some more from you and what Casper Und is doing. So you have 90 seconds. And uh, feel free to pitch your idea to the audience. Thank you. So we all have financial dreams. And <clears throat> today, it is more difficult than ever to reach these dreams without investing in proper financial planning, which is why most people need an advisor in their life. And that is Caspond. We help our customers to reach their goals by integrating finance into their everyday life and enabling them to invest the way they want. And this is how it works. All it needs to start is five minutes, a smartphone, and one Swiss franc. And you will get a Swiss bank account, your first investment portfolio worth one Swiss franc, and the Casper Und card. And it's this card which brings investing into your everyday life. Because every time you pay with it, you will automatically round up to the next Swiss franc and invest the difference into your goals. Together, with the option to have as many personal goals as you want, the option to have a Pillar 3A saving and an overview of all of your payments, you can now manage your financial life. We're based in St. Gallen, we're seven people, and we're currently starting to onboard our first alpha users in the next weeks, and we would be happy to have you on board as well. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much. I have to admit though, I'm always a bit hesitant when someone uh, promises me that they're gonna take care of all my finances. So I'm uh, very curious to hear now your questions to the whole Cosper and I idea and John Philip. Um, well, thank you a lot for the presentation. I mentioned earlier competitive advantages, so I'd like to go straight there. So, so what, how you plan? How are you different? You know, what, what are your attributes and are they going to sustain over time on your product, you know, compared to all the, you know, the Neon, Revolut, and, and Wise, and uh, all the 3A, uh, frankly, is that the KBs are opening now? Yes, so there's one big difference. For the first time ever, we combine payments and investing and bring it into one product. In this way, we make it easy for everyone to start because you just need one Swiss franc and some micro top-ups to understand investing. And that is really the big difference to all the other players who only focus on one point, whereas we combine both of them and by that enable you to start and to understand how investing and reaching financial goals works. Okay. Olga, what do you think? I mean, maybe thinking as well, uh, if I remember correctly, you mentioned that you are having some alpha users, so breaking it down, how many people are currently using it? Mm -hmm. 
So currently, uh, we have no users yet. We have a pre-selected list. So on, your, on our homepage, you can actually sign up to become one of the first customers. Uh, we have more than 350 people who have pre-signed up for that list. And we will now start with these users till the end of the year because we want to develop the app together with them and then have the big market launch next year. So what is your unfair advantage then? Why should I come and become the first user? How can I trust you? So I think the trick is that you can actually just start with one Swiss franc and the top-up amounts. And that actually gives you the uh, chance to, you know, try us out with small amounts. It's like a first test drive in a car. And once you have the trust, you can then invest more with Caspa and But that is actually the idea how we want to build up that trust. And what is then your big promise towards me if I start to be a user? What is my upside? So your upside actually is that you can start investing. And that is the most powerful tool you need to actually reach your goals because you get zero money on your bank account and you actually get a long-term return if you start investing. And that is what we can deliver you, exposure to investing. Thank you. And what will I be investing in? I mean, is that going to be like equities or um, um, uh, listed stocks or...? No, so you will be investing into a passive portfolio of equity, of fixed income, of gold and of real estate. And we will do that with ETFs and index funds. So giving you exposure to a passive investment portfolio, which is the state of the art investment approach currently. So you're like a little bit like a Revolut that just takes uh, a few cents out of my account every day or hour and uh, it goes into uh, like a robo advisor type uh, exactly. platform. Exactly. We combine these two business models. And the idea is that we are all investment professionals and we bring our expertise from that professional history we all had into today's life and enable you to invest just as professional people would do. Especially having two such um, experienced entrepreneurs here, I would uh, love to hear from both of you, maybe just each of you, one nugget of advice for, uh, well, Casper and uh, entrepreneurial journey. Okay. Uh, well, I, as I mentioned before, I had those uh, um, criterias. You know, I think it's, it's always be reasonable uh, when you when you talk to investors and when you when you make projections. It's something that is uh, I've been burned uh, a few times. <laughs> um, also, I, I think you are in a very busy, quite busy market. And you know, if I um, if I had to answer, you know, am I going to put my clients' money, you know, cash stock, um, bonds, um, equities, hedge funds, you know, how I'm going to do the allocation and all that? I I think uh, that is uh, something where where you got to get the trust of the the you know the client that that puts his wealth with you. So basically, basically staying still reasonable with your pricing. And of course, keep on building that, that trust as, I mean, I mentioned uh, <laughs> talking finances is always a bit delicate. Olga, okay, how about you? Well, as the financial planning expert, I would advise to carefully uh, do your financial projections aligned with your uh, marketing strategy and the objectives you want to achieve. Do proper research and get the right team on board to conquer the world. Good luck. Cool. Thank you. Well, on that note, jan thank you very much for being here and having shared Casper and, and best of luck to you and your team. Thank you. So we're now already up to the second startup. Who will it be, Matthias? Exactly. So next up, I have the absolute pleasure to welcome um, Pascal Berard, uh, co-founder of Animatico. Um, you want to revolutionize customer experience of your clients with interactive avatars. I think that sounds fancy and great. Maybe a personal question. If you would choose an avatar, what would it be? You choose a monster, an animal, yourself. What would be your favorite avatar? <laughs> so many people are actually asking me if our standard avatar is myself, which is not the case, I have to say this now <laughs> here. Um, it would be definitely a very friendly avatar. Uh, I think positivity in characters is extremely powerful. And uh, yeah, I would pick such one. So what, what, would, what would it be? An animal, a panda? Uh, it would 
I like human-like uh, characters. All right. uh, uh, we haven't experimented too much with animals. Yeah, I've seen Albert Einstein you did lately, so that was uh, a great job, I had to say. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. So without further ado, uh, it's your time to pitch. You have 90 seconds. The stage is there. The audience and whole, whole of Switzerland is listening. Convince them. Perfect. Thank you. All of you know the fabulous Disney and Pixar characters, from Nemo to Elsa from Frozen. And you also know how powerful they are in creating an emotional connection with the viewer. On the other side, every one of you is using digital devices uh, in gathering places basically every day, from food ordering at McDonald's to ticket ordering at SBB. These digital devices have often unhygienic touchscreens. Uh, they, they are hard to use, unintuitive. And if you need additional information or additional support, uh, it's hard to get. And last but not least, they never welcome you and they fail to create this emotional bond with you. We at Animatico bring these two worlds together and create animated, interactive, voice-controlled avatars that guide the user step-by-step step through a process. We have created an avatar platform for our partners to easily and very quickly create this type of immersive uh, experiences uh, for various use cases from hotel check-in to food ordering to product recommendation in a store or discovery. Um, and we have gained uh, many high profile customers in Switzerland from uh, Migro and Post uh, to Citizen M and are very excited to see where this goes next and are looking forward to establish new connections with investors. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Pascal. I have to admit, like while listening to you, I was just thinking of, so basically it's a virtual uh, carnival party where all of a sudden people uh, dare to ask questions. I'm wondering, what do you guys think about this and, and what sort of questions do you have for Pascal and Animatico? Ladies first now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the presentation. I think it's quite a cool idea as I was personally just yesterday trying to make such a purchase and I think that would be interesting. And I wonder, uh, so what is your business model? How are you going to make money out of it? Yes, that's, that's a good question and we have, um, we base our business model on an indirect distribution through partners. Given that we have several different use cases that are possible, uh, we create just the tooling, the authoring tool that enables our partners to very easily and quickly create these interactions. So something very complex like a simulation of a human almost um, will become very easy uh, for partners to then create their own use cases. Could you expand a little bit more on those use cases? I didn't get this uh, at the beginning. Yes, so um, we have, we currently focus on several use cases. This uh, can be in well, How big is the market? Uh, the, the market, uh, we, we look at our partners as, as the market. Uh, and in Switzerland alone for interactive experiences, we have a market of, of several hundred million uh, Swiss francs. Uh, and if you look at this market globally, uh, it's much bigger because we go into the digital signage market uh, at some point. And could you give me the size of a specific, the size of a market of one of your specific use cases? Uh, not directly on top of my heart, but again, this is a task of our partners. So we are in the market of providing tooling and supporting the partners in realizing these use cases. How much money are you raising? Uh, so we just closed a, a financing round uh, almost a, a year ago, but we are still well financed um, and we are looking to, to, to raise a Series A or a bridge round in, in about 12 months mm -hmm. uh, okay. in the range of a few millions. Maybe Olga, I'd be curious to hear um, well, your perspective or what would be the questions you would ask Animatico if ever they apply to be part of the AVB startup program? How would you make our customer life easier and more fun? I think it would become easier because we really empower them through our tooling uh, to create amazing experiences without having deep technical knowledge. What we do from a technology point of view is very advanced, but what our partners get as a tool is, is, is extremely simple to use. And I think this would make them very happy in a sense because they can they get the tools. So would this enable ABB to save money or to make more money? Um, 
I think it's it's both. It's it's an extension of of uh, the service quality, the experience, which will lead to, uh, uh, in more sales. Um, but at the same time, I think we can also provide additional services by extending opening hours, things like this that haven't been uh, possible before. Well, I think uh, the, the the sound of making more money and saving money. I hope it'll help you to get some good leads. <laughs> At least I am still very curious to understand how this carnival party works. Uh, on this note, Pascal, thank you so much for having been here. Uh, best of luck to you and your team at Animatico. Thank you. Thank you. So, Matthias, tell us, who is the third and last startup of today? Exactly. Last but not least, uh, we're moving a bit away from uh, cartoons and uh, anime, like avatars, uh, to a super interesting field called plastic. So I have the last startup to introduce today. Uh, it's Audrey, Andre Bernard, and he's co-founder of Matric. And Matric develops a unique watermark for plastic marking products right inside the forming machine. So I'm not a plastic expert, and uh, I guess you are then. So tell me, what is, where is the fascination from plastic coming from? How did you end up in this, in this specific field? It's a good question, um, because it's not obvious. Um, I'm, a, I'm a scientist and technologist by heart. Uh, I'm also a serial entrepreneur. And um, I was working in a, in a university of applied sciences, and there I had uh, facing uh, material problems a lot and uh, traceability of materials along the value chain. And that's where exactly came this pain point from. So basically being able to exactly know where is a part coming from. Well, that's great. And you told me so uh, that you don't have to recall if something is breaking the coffee machine, you don't have to recall all of them, but the very specific one as soon as you know where it's broken. I don't want to take away your pitch, so that's your job. Uh, you have 90 seconds to convince the audience, and um, we're super excited to hear more from you. The stage is yours. Thanks a lot. Just imagine you produce one million of these test tubes for blood samples to run a test. And now you put these millions of blood samples into this uh, test tube, yours as well. How do you find out which one of these test tubes is yours? You can't, because they all look the same unless you mark it or you label it. Today, labeling is a process which is cumbersome, complex, adds time and cost. That's exactly where we come into place. We have invented the unique watermark of plastic that enables using micro nanotechnology, using a tiny little device that is in the heart of the forming machine to issue a watermark, so a data matrix code individually on every single test tube, on every single plastic device that is produced uh, in the world. This is um, a very fast millisecond process and we enable then to make traceability, brand identification and industry 4.0 because we also integrate sensors. So we make this little plastic tube as unique, as individual as you are. Thanks a lot, Andre. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I am not as familiar with plastics as you are. And I think it's always interesting to understand problems of which you've actually never heard before. So, um, Olga, what do you think, or what are the questions you would like to ask Andre to better understand uh, Matrix and its, um, well, business ideas behind it? So. I think I understand the problem you are uh, trying to solve is traceability and many other aspects that come along. Um, and um, I, I wonder, so what, what is your go-to market? Uh, who are your customers and how do you approach them? Yeah, we first approach two kinds of customers. These are on the one side the product owner, the ones that then produce the plastic uh, for, their, for their purposes and bring it to market. And on the other side, the service providers running the machine, running the, uh, the equipment that produces the plastic like injection molding, thermoforming and the like. So these are the two customers. At their interface, usually, the decision is made for a marking process if needed and it's increasingly needed because there are several markets demanding for traceability along the, the value chain. So are you working with uh, big corporates? Yes. 
On one hand, it's a big corporate. I mean, like uh, producing these uh, things in, in billion quantity. I mean, you can imagine for what purpose we need these things here. And on the other side, also for smaller customers producing, I mean, we have many customers that produce uh, coffee machines in Switzerland. There are many plastic parts inside. And car, for instance, has some 10,000 plastic parts inside. So there's a, a big market out there that needs traceability and compliance with regulations. Um, <clears throat> thank you, this sounds interesting. Uh, so is this like, like RFID uh, in a different way with using um, uh, U-marker technology? Um, and um, so for example, I was in a, I had a beverage company once for three years and we produced these hundreds of containers with PET bottles, right? So mm. could you mark a PET bottle and on the cap or on the bottle itself and do this, well, how much would that cost? So this is, uh, of course, a sub business. However, I mean, it comes in large quantities at the end worth a lot, so thousands of Swiss francs. And um, what we can bring the, uh, the producer of these uh, PET bottles, for instance, is that they don't need a downstream process like laser engraving, like, like uh, stickers to put individual stickers on it. Like the uh, expiration date. Exactly. They can have that associated with a data matrix code, uh, like a QR code, directly on every single plastic device. So right at its birth. And where are you now in terms of you know, prototype, going to market, scaling? So we have now produced our minimal viable product. So our flagship is coming out next year, middle of next year. So this one here helps us to uh, find pilots. So we have integrated pilots that we put this thing in their place, in their injection molding machines to produce the first parts and to be able to also learn from this customer along this uh, value chain that they're creating with uh, traceability and identity of all these products. This is associated with a lot of downstream and upstream data that we can link through a feedback loop and gain even more insights of the products and the production. Okay. Well, Andre, thank you so much for explaining more the challenges involved in traceability for plastic and maybe sometimes even, well, niching industries that not everyone is aware of. Mm. On this note, best of luck to you and your team at Matric. Thanks. And we are already at the end of this Startup Battle episode. As promised, you have the possibility to vote and help your favorite startup to get a spot on the finals of November 10th. For this, please go and visit our website, digitaltag.swiss slash startup battle. I would like to thank all the entrepreneurs, so Jean-Philippe with Cosper and Pascal with Animatico, and as well, André with Matric, for having shared their passion and their well, businesses that they're really working on day and night. And of course, our two experts, Olga and Eric, for the critical questions and helping us understand it even a bit better. So next time you meet a startup, you know how to ask some good questions. And lastly, of course, I'd like to thank our partners, InnoSwiss, AWS, SIGTIG, Swisscom, and Canton de Vaux. Because without you, Startup Battle wouldn't be. So looking forward to seeing you all next week on Wednesday.